Good morning everyone, so today we're at a little Peugeot van, I think this is a Peugeot partner It's a 2017 model and it's a little 1.6 diesel engine Is it a partner Roddy? Partner So the customer's complaint is the check engine light is on And they had used their own little scanner so the guy said it had a P2207, which we agree with, heating of the nitrogen oxide sensor, heating fault. So that, to me, reads like it's something to do with the heating element, you know, like with an O2 sensor, you've got the heating circuit, so I wonder if that operates exactly the same, but first of all, we need to go and find the thing. Uh, well, I'll be in the exhaust, uh, but... So what we'll do, we'll go into live data and see if there's a heating thing uh, connected with it. Codes. Don't know what that one was, but it's a heating one. We'll go into data. Oof. Roddy, this has a rakey stuff, sir. Uh, look at that. So I think we'll go into exhaust line information. X. Exhaust line information 3, we have knock sensor heating control and it says heating not activated but there's nothing else there about a knock sensor so we'll start the car up and see I just need to go in there So this is uh, no changing at all, so it could be the heating element within the NOx sensor or a power supply or a fuse. Don't know, but we're not getting any activation, so I think we'll, we'll look under the car, see if we can see anything. If we go under functional tests, actuator tests, continue, and scroll down, NOx sensor heating test. So I've already done this test and it doesn't give you a pass-fail result. I think you're just to go and find the knock sensor and see if it's got a feed. So we'll do that first and we'll, we'll run that test. So we're underneath the little van and so I can see this at the front here but that looks like the fifth injector. That was pretty diesel or what do you call that? Def fluid into the exhaust so I don't think that's it. And as I'm looking along the exhaust You'd imagine you see something like a O2 sensor, but I can't see nothing from in here. There is, I managed to find it thanks to a video from mechanic Matt. Matt's up in Cooper. So he had posted one very similar to it. So there's a knock sensor there, it's right at the back of the vehicle. And there's the control module. So what I'm going to do is, Roddy's got to hand me doing my Veris, and we're going to probe into these four wires. So Matt says in his video, one's a power, one's a ground, and the other two are communication wires. So we're just going to check them on the Veris. And by all accounts, it needs a new knock sensor. They might be notorious to go. So you can see there, we're into the brown wire, which is, I believe is ground, and the black wire, which I believe is power. And you can see on our scope. Oh dear, head torches everything. See in our scope, we have a good 12 volts. So, I think we need an ox set go. And as Matt said in his video, the other two are communication wires. So, we're just going to see the pink wire here. Oh, sorry about this. We'll go to the pink wire. Pink wire back probed. So, you can see there. Two volts, and that's a can communication line. And then we'll go to the pink wire, sorry, the yellow wire, and it's exactly the same. Uh, 
it's 2.46 volts, so we need an knock sensor. We gave, we gave the van a run after clearing the codes. And seeing pending knock sensor heater circuit control circuit high bank one. We went through to the main dealers, and here it is, part number 982112980, original part. So, you can actually hear something shake inside it, I don't know how this works. But actually in the multi-plug, it's five pins, but on the car it's only four wires, so. A bit expensive this one, £350. Oochia! So, we'll go and fit it and see if the code's clear. Right, so this job has turned out to be horrendous. So we managed to remove the old sensor from the exhaust, but we used heat. And that probably was the worst thing we had ever done. We should have took it to our engineering friend and he would have extracted that. Because what he was saying, this is a very common fault with these things, that you have to remove it in so many parts, Roddy, is that right? Four. four parts, you have to remove this in four parts because it damages the threads within the exhaust. And once you've done that, you are kaput. So he came up and he ran new threads in it. Roddy, can you remember the size? Oh, he told us, I can't remember, it was about 19 mil or something like that, tap to give us new threads because this sensor, this sensor was only going down so far, uh, the best way to describe it is, it went in maybe, I went in about that and we were left with, like, with the wiggle wiggle because it hadn't, the threads were damaged at the bottom so he had to come and cut new threads on it. So it finally is in, so you could probably do this on the car if uh, you just left the exhaust loose but he wanted it off, so he do it on the bench to do it properly. So, be warned, if you do this job, this has to go tight like that, and then that goes tight. That doesn't need to be too tight, just as tight as a spark plug. But here's the new part here. You could end up damaging the threads when you put this back in, and that would be an expensive one for 350 quid. So we'll put it back on and let you see it. Well, there it's all back together. So what should have been a, a job it took maybe an hour max turned into a nightmare. So there's the plug back in. You can see there's actually one blank space, so it's only it is only four wires, even though the unit has five pins on it. So that's the new one back in. There is a the gap at the bottom, so you can see the sensor's no longer wiggling about. If the sensor does not go in properly, this keeps wiggling. So Tackle this job at your own peril. Now in this system you've got to tell it that it had a new knock sensor, so I'll take you back into the menu, but you wait 30 seconds once it does it. Switch ignition on again, Gus. So, quick. Yes. Reinstallation successful. So we'll go continue. So that was under replacement of Knox sensor and that was under back special functions replacement parts work on emissions control circuit replacement of Knox sensor so that was the routine we went through so let's go back let's go back go into our data go into exhaust line 3 So we start up, Gus. It's still got heating, no activating heat. Heating not activated. Don't know what the strategy is for that model, so let's go back and check our codes again. We're saying it's a bit like that Volkswagen we've done. We don't know what the strategy is. So no codes present. We'll get a run. Aye. We'll get a run. Right, we'll come back to you, we'll see what it does along. So we've took it a run. As you can see, it's dark o'clock, and you can see that the nitrogen oxide sensing circuit at the top is finally heating. The, it says the content of downstream is 200, and this one at the bottom, flow of exhaust gases estimated by the nitrogen oxide sensor. When Roddy floors it, you can see these peaks. So, we're in, ah, there we go. We're flying down the road, so. That's what we've found. There's no point standing looking at it in the garage. Take the thing a run. 
it saves a whole lot of hassle. Anyway, so we're just sitting here with key on engine off, and you can see after a 10 minute run, nitrogen oxides content downstream, so you see the figures falling. The heating's still activated, that's after a, a run, and the flow of exhaust gas is estimated by the nitrogen oxide thing as zero, which is right because it, the engine is off, so if Roddy starts the engine up, eh, just... So there's, you see the bottom one, the exhaust gas is shoot up, and then the top one shoots up as well. I get a wee blip, Rudy. Ah, we can see that sensor's worked, worked. We've tested that. We're happy with that. And the acid test is... Codes. No codes present. Cheers.